Shattering sound. Thesis. Breaking the sound barrier was one of the most important accomplishments in recent human history. It inspired the space race, which led to several technologies we take for granted today. The sound barrier was a major obstacle to exploring beyond Earth. Pilots and their planes which accidentally, or intentionally, reached the sound barrier barely survived, if at all. It was a commonly held belief that the sound barrier was an unbreakable wall. The name that stuck. The sound barrier first got its name during World War II, when the P-38 Lockheed Lightnings were being tested in America for Britain. But the Lightning was facing major problems when doing a power dive, a maneuver at high speeds performed during pilot training. The first P-38 test pilot's controls mysteriously stopped working until he was dangerously close to the ground. Then his controls began to work again, and he pulled up just in time. After this, British commanders feared for the safety of their soldiers. Other pilots in the U.S. attempted to dismiss British commanders' fears of crashing by practicing power dives. All of the pilots either died or barely survived, which did not inspire confidence in the commanders. Until this point, only cannonballs and bullets have been able to surpass Mach 1, or the sound barrier. But, how could humans tell if an object such as this broke the sound barrier? It's quite simple. In the 1880s, Ernst Mach successfully photographed a bullet breaking sound, but the bullet traveled quite quickly. This wasn't really important until pilots realized they had gone at similar speeds during dives. However, they also realized that no pilot had been able to get up to or beyond the speed of sound, and it was declared a barrier that could not be broken. The term spread like wildfire, and the sound barrier was believed to be an engineering limitation. Design Problem what they had not realized was that the bulky design of the wing caused dangerous fluttering of the wing. When the plane got up to high speeds, too much wind was blowing over the wings. The excessive flow of air caused the wings to flutter and sometimes caused shock waves. This caused the plane to lose some control functionality when diving. When the plane speeds got too great and major shock waves formed, wing flutter and the shock waves caused most wings to fall apart, destroying some planes before the pilots regained control. This was the sound barrier, which was almost like a plane hitting a wall at 767.2 miles per hour. When most planes hit the sound barrier, they crashed so terribly that engineers couldn't find an effective solution for making better planes before they had to be sent off to Britain for the war effort. Trial and Error Since no airline mechanic would want airplanes to be potentially deadly, some decided to invest in sound-breaking technology. If a plane could break the sound barrier, then power dives would no longer be dangerous. However, most still believed that breaking the sound barrier couldn't be done. In the face of impossibility, some people strived to prove them wrong. Among these were the engineers of NASA, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the precursor to NASA in the U.S. Meanwhile, in Germany, a rocket with the potential to break the sound barrier had been constructed. The V-2 rocket was a simple missile, but it could go supersonic, and that alone could make it quite dangerous and destructive. This threat pushed Britain and America to further develop supersonic technology. After all, a supersonic plane, rather than a simple missile, might put them ahead. But would they have enough time? Apparently not. The war was over. The Americans, though on the winning side of the war, had made the least headway in supersonic flight, having designed not a single potential sound-breaking aircraft. They decided to change that with the Bell S-1. NACA would work with the Bell Corporation, founded by Larry Bell, in order to create the Bell S-1. At the same time, Britain was constructing a plane that might break the sound barrier first. The Mile 52, or M-52, had proper wing thickness, a bullet-like shape, and even a backup mechanism in case of failure. If a pilot needed to eject, he would ignite five specially designed explosive charges directly behind the cockpit, allowing both the pilot and the cockpit to parachute safely to the ground. One downside was that the backup mechanism and the strongly built cockpit required a shorter pilot, about 5 foot 7 inches. The main voyage of the M52 was cancelled by a British scientist, Ben Lockspizer. Lockspizer had had a chance to go to Germany to get ideas for the M52 from Germany's now-defunct wartime aircraft program. 
what he learned led him to cancel the M-52 design. Unlike the M-52, these German planes had swept back wings, which reduced shockwaves immensely. Lockspizer realized how essential this design was, but the wing shape was not an adjustment that could be made overnight. He realized that the M-52 would be a complete waste of resources and a probable death trap if the M-52 tried to break the sound barrier as it was. However, he only gave part of his reasoning to his team, that it was too dangerous, not mentioning that he planned to improve the design and try again. This confused the other engineers and made was them really quite hopping mad at the time. Britain did try to use swept-back wings after the M-52 failed, with the DH-108 Swallow, piloted by Jeffrey D. Halliband which ended in Halavan's death and a shattered plane. With Germany and Great Britain out of the picture, America was left all alone in the quest for supersonic flight, and they took their chance. Chuck Yeager and the Bellix One, a story of success. After the DH-108's failure, most engineers came to the conclusion that swept back wings were too risky. Therefore, the Bellix One was designed with straight wings. As for the fuel, NASA officials chose rocket fuel, despite its unpredictability, for the sole reason that they believed it to be more likely than jet fuel to break the sound barrier. The next challenge was choosing a pilot. A bachelor would make sense, but all the bachelor NACA pilots were either underskilled or didn't want to participate. After a while, Chuck Yeager, married with two children, appeared to be the only option. Chuck had helped his mechanic father when he was young and was a fighter pilot during the war. So he had the experience required to fly this plane. He was confident that this plane could and would break the sound barrier, so he nicknamed it Glamorous Glennis after his wife. October 10th, 1947 was the first scheduled flight. Despite the untrustworthiness of rocket fuel, things went well during the flight. However, at 94% the speed of sound, he experienced all the hindrances that had foiled every other attempt. Everyone started to lose hope. A year's worth of construction based on at least a decade of discovery wasn't enough. Then, one member of the team suggested a wing that moved freely to increase plane stability. They made those changes and tried again. However, on October 12, 1947, Chuck had fallen off a horse, ending up with two broken ribs. Worried about missing the flight, he sought out the services of a civilian doctor to prevent the military's doctors from canceling the flight. The Glamorous Glennis' second flight on October 14, 1947, started with a drop from a B-29 bomber at 45,000 feet in the air. With only two and a half minutes of rocket fuel, the pressure was on. Influenced by a teammate's suggestion, Chuck turned his wing very slightly left and right at point eighty three, point eighty eight, and point ninety two Mach. Chuck wasn't sure if this would work. After the last flight, he wasn't completely sure if the glamorous Glennis could break the sound barrier. However, as soon as he heard a loud boom, his hopes for success had been restored. In the end, he made it to Mach 1.06, even faster than the speed of sound. The flight remained classified for a year, however, so that Germany and Great Britain didn't surpass the U.S. By 1948, the news was leaked. Chuck was a hero, obtaining a Collier's Award, one of the highest aviation trophies, and no technical details were revealed. It took five years for the other nations to catch up. NACA's persistence inspired space exploration. Beyond Sound Without the sound barrier holding air travel back, not even the sky was the limit. Russia and the USA were on a race to the moon. The Russian space program sent the first satellites, animals, and humans into space but it was the American astronauts who first set foot on the surface of the moon. The technology developed to make space travel possible led to far-reaching inventions, like artificial satellites to broadcast signals down to Earth, including GPS, infrared ear thermometers that use the same technology that is used for identifying planets, prosthetics with shock-absorbing technology, wireless headwear, LED lights, cordless vacuums, freeze-dried foods, and memory foam just to name a few. Conclusion Solving the challenges of breaking the sound barrier in human flight dramatically propelled science and exploration forward in so many different directions and allowed humanity to reach beyond the sky.